Hi everybody, thanks for watching today. We really appreciate it. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit uh, different with the mosaic type stuff we've been doing. I had in my head, I've had this thought for a long time, that there's a certain cuff that I buy. It looks like this, I don't think you can see from here, but it has a little rage rim, raised rim, which I really like because it makes a wide one inch channel, okay? Into which you could glue all kinds of stuff, do tissue decoupage, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. But I've just never returned to it till we started to do this. And then I thought, huh, with all those little shaped beads that you see in the checks type jewelry that you see in like uh, beadwork magazine, stuff like that, I am not interested in doing it on a string because it's just not the way my brain works. But I love the look of it. I thought, huh, what could we do to kind of, you know, do something that does kind of look like that? So I think I figured it out and I'm going to share it with you. So you'll have to come over here so I can show you because it's kind of fiddly little stuff. But before we do, be sure you subscribe to the channel and if you like the video please like it please give me a like that helps me out a lot and makes me happy makes it look like somebody likes what we do um also if you would leave a comment if you want to leave a kind comment if you have any questions or uh, just a suggestion or anything feel free to leave it so long as it's done kindly i will respond okay usually within a day if not sooner so anyway having said all that Come on over here and I'll show you what I've done. Hi guys, so this is what I did with my cuff. Of course, started out like this, and as you can see, it's got these raised edges. So this is what they call a channel cuff. And if you have your own ideas about it, or you want to try this, this project, you will want to look up CUFF02499. CUFF, I think, is all caps or not? No. No, not all caps. You know what, we'll put it in the description so that you have the right link, okay? But it's at the website. We have plenty of them. And um, I've had them for a while, but I just couldn't get into mind what I want to do with them until I started doing this bead mosaic type stuff. So I've always admired those, you know, check pieces that are in beadwork and stuff, but it's just not for me to be working with string like that. So I thought, what can I do along those lines on a cuff with glue? And this is what I've done. I've taken these little check beads, like, you know, these ones that we have at the site and I've taken and I have them in two colors but you could do one whatever you want I've taken some little seed beads here I've taken some little daisy beads actually they're bead spacers put down then I topped them with a gold uh, bead and I used a little bit of chain and that's pretty much all there oh there's a little row of um, light green um, rhinestone chain under here you don't hardly see it it's just kind of to fill cracks underneath so basically what i'm gonna do there's no way i can do this whole thing for you in a short amount of time it'd probably be on here about an hour at least so the best thing is just give you the basics because that's all it is is basic stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the middle of this cuff and i'm going to do just like this much of it the rest of it is pretty much the same thing just let it sit up and turn it you know till you get to the ends but anyway, so I'm going to use these beads this time because we had a whole lot of them. We still do. And they are BD04252, and I will give you a link to these as well as other colors that will work. I'm going to use the pink ones this time, okay? But what I do is I start off with chain. Now, this is vintage chain. I don't have it to offer you. It's just some I had. Um, bead and link chain might work pretty good. Um, a thin figaro might work pretty good. Or just use rhinestone chain, whatever you have. You know, just, you know, experiment with it. But you need roughly seven inches, okay? Twice, because as you can see, it's at the bottom and it's at the top. So, being as how I forgot my ruler, I'm going to have to fake it. But, you know what? I believe I can. And the way I'm going to fake it is I'm going to get it clear out to the edge out of here and see how to go over here and then just pull it off and I'll add a little to it just to make sure I have enough I don't mind losing a little bit of chain to make sure I have enough because you lose a lot of chain when you cut it off and it doesn't go far enough right so you lose a little this way okay so I need two lengths this long so this will be easy now just to get the second one the same length so I will do that 
And as I, I believe I ended it on the flat piece. That seemed to be the easiest way to end it. Okay, here. Um, so I'm going to nip this off. Oops. That is not the good way to do stuff like that, by the way. Bring it down over here by yourself. I'm, I have it off camera because I want to keep it away from Javi. Okay, there you go. I'm trying really hard to stay on camera, guys, as I know I have not been doing very good with that lately. And I know that's frustrating, so I don't want to frustrate you. This is supposed to be fun, dang it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm pulling this back toward me because I don't want it to go flying at Javi. That's why, because she's sitting over here next to me. Watching the video and keeping it going the right way. So now I've got two are roughly about the same length, okay? I'm only going to glue... I don't know. I might just glue them all on because it will stay. We'll just see. Let's see. But I only want to do the middle of this because that's all you need to do this. After that, it's up to you because it's just... It's a pattern. Just like uh, when you do those, you know, bead patterns. It's a pattern. So once you get the basic thing, you just have to stay with it, you know? So now, hopefully, I've got one that's not all dried up. I'm going to try this a little bit. That's the one bit of bad thing about E6000. It'll do this. I thought I had it cleaned up first before I came down here, but evidently not good enough. Okay, so now I'll poke it with this, and that should do the trick. It should come right up. Now. Yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. Now, the way I've done it before in videos when I was doing assemblage, which is, is kind of like assemblage, but not quite. It's more like a cross between bead embroidery assemblage and mosaic. Uh, somewhere in the middle. I would just drag the chain through it and then apply it, but that's probably not the best way to do that. So I'm just going to start in the middle, put some of this down like this. It can be wide. It doesn't have to be precise. I do believe I need to do a little, bring this out just a little tiny bit more because it's sticking. I should have started with a brand new tube, but I didn't have a brand new tube. They're not coming till tomorrow. Yes. Okay, so let me just push this up. Now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. Now, the reason I wouldn't want to like fill this whole thing with glue is because the glue will start setting up possibly before you, you know, get everything on here. Okay, but another way to do this, if you want to do it, would be with Seralune. And for sure, I know it works. It will absolutely work for you. It will work exceedingly well. The only thing is, is that it costs more to use. So I thought, well, if we can do this, you know, with uh, glue, then we're better off for it. Now, <clears throat> what I did on this one, I found... The top one I tried to lay flat. This one I kind of put on its side, and I found that when I put it on its side, it worked better, so I'm going to go for that look. So I'm going to kind of go this way with the bead parts down, okay? So let me just push that up. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to glue the whole thing down. I can do that later when I finish the cuff because we don't have to. We're just going to work right in here. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other one other side so we have it all put where it needs to be put I just kind of take my glue across like this I got to get enough down this is a real good argument for a new uh, tube when it gets like this only thing is when you get a new tube then sometimes it wants to come out too fast and that's no good either so here we go this will be fine and you can always spread it around with your toothpick a little bit, you know. But you don't want to get it too blurped up beyond where it is that you're working. Because if you do that, then you may have to pick some of it off because it will interfere. Okay. So, this is down good enough so we can start working. Okay, so it's just like right in here that I've done it. And I'm going to try to push this up as far as I can to the raised edge. If you can see it. Try to keep it as close as you can to the raised edge. Because like with this one, this is like not quite, I like it to be right on there. So this is kind of showing a little bit, I mean, it's no big deal, but it's just my, for my idea of how this should be, it should be shoved up as far as it can and evenly. I got it a little crooked on my first one that I showed you and um, I was not happy with that, but it wasn't horribly so. So anyway, by then I would have had to take the whole thing apart. So I decided not to do that. All right, so here's how it goes. I've got these two down then you really can't see it in here but there's a little 
row of rhinestone chain. And once again, that would be seven inches as well. And it would be, you know, I should have done that before I cut that off. That would have been good, huh? Okay, so I'll just spread it across. If I lose some, like I say, I would rather lose some than not have enough. And with the rhinestone chain, you can always cut it a little bit, you know, the little bits off. You can cut them off and use other things, use them for other things. I'm not going to put this on yet, though. I just have it ready. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, as you can see, I've got a row of the check flowers underneath there. So I'm going to start placing a few of them so that you can see how they go. Now, let's see. How did I put them? Okay, I put two petals up. Sometimes it does matter. So I'm going to put it, if you can see... I'm going to put it so the face is this way, I think. Yeah, one petal up. This is one petal up, and then there's two at the bottom. So there's actually like five little petals on that. So you put one up. Now, this is a bead. It does have holes on the side. It's true. But this is going to be deep, so it won't matter. You won't see it. Still got glue on me from when I was doing this. Okay, so now I've got the first one on, and I'm just going to keep going in a row. This is kind of boring, but it's very important that you get it on nice and even. So I don't advise that you put a bunch of uh, glue down first. Now, if you develop your technique and you find out that it works for you to do that with this, then do it. But for me, I think I'd rather glue them one at a time. So, about that. Now you can see I don't have them completely up next to each other because no matter way, what way you do it, you're going to have to do some fill. Okay, so you might as well leave yourself some room to do it. And I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I'm going to put another one over here. One petal up. Trying to hide the holes as much as I can, but don't have to that much. So you can see, you got to press it up a little bit because if you don't, your chain's going to be crookedy, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my chain, and then I will put another row. And they're going to fit perfect, so that's going to be great. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay my chain down. So the way I'm going to do that is the same way as I did the other. I'm just going to take some off the tip here and go underneath. Try not to get too much visible up on that, you know, flower because we just really don't want to see that you know we want it to be nice and neat so I'm just gonna glue a little bit as I told you so can see if we get it even let me see pull it up like in the center so that like this you know so you can make sure you've got the middle just kind of find the center and I'm gonna start it right here and push it up And that's how it goes. And as you can see, there's room here, there's room here, there's room here, there's room here. You're not going to want to leave that show. You will fill that with either um, a little tiny pearl or with uh, seed, seed uh, beads or even uh, micro beads if you want. That's how you'll do that. So now I'm going to do three more down here to give you the idea of the pattern. Okay, it's really simple. Keep one petal up. Let's keep doing that. Get it on the one side. That's my glue technique, and then slide it in. That way you don't have glue going everywhere. And the glue, when you slide it in, will tend to slide under the piece so that you have it completely covered. So we do that again. Okay, I've got, it's gonna fuss me a little bit, which is typical. You wanna get it in there nice and tight though, so I have. And it's nice and even and all that good stuff. Okay, fine. Now what? Well, what I like to do next is I have these little kind of like daisy spacers that I use. Like this. I'm not sure if we have this on the site right now or not. I think we might have some at Etsy. But anyway, I'm always replacing them. I'll get new. You may have some. This is not an unordinary, you know, piece. It's pretty common. But here's what's going to happen. I take it. This will relieve a little bit of the patching you have to do in the middle. I put one over the top. Now, if it's a mosaic, normally I'd be aiming to get it all 
you know, lay down flat. But in this case, I'm not worrying about that. I'm just worrying about having a nice, complete piece. So I'm going to put that over here. And I'm going to try and leave some of this chain showing. I'm not having great success, but that's okay. I have something else to put in here. I put this down just in case. Like, I could put another thing in chain, but it would have made it really clunky. And this sometimes, you know, can help you with fill, and it will peek out from the bottom. So it will, you know, kind of take care of some of that stuff. Okay, so now I need some of these little golden beads. Most of us have some hanging around somewhere. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick them up with my tweezers, which have a little bit of quirk on them, and I'm going to just lay them in on their sides, like I do with the seed beads, you know, on their sides. That way you're not going to see the hole, okay? Here's another one on the side. All right, so that's the basic dealio that you got to do, except for the fill. Now, for the fill, I used the little seed beads, and I like those colors together. I love the purple and, and blue together and with the gold. I think that's really rich. Um, so I could do that, or I have a lot of these little gold ones. So let's just see what it would look like if we laid these in. You know what? We could. I think I've got room here in the middle of this one. But whatever you're going to do, just think about it. When you experiment, you're going to have to commit to whatever you decide on. Okay, so you're going to have to check ahead of time to make sure, do I have enough beads? Are they going to fit all the way around? Because, you know, if you start going all the way down, they're like, oh, no, I ran out of beads. Or, or oh, no, um, I, you know, it's not going to fit right, it's not looking right, you know, then that kind of makes, you know, kind of pick them all out and start over again. I'm sorry if I was holding that a little bit close to myself, guys. I'm trying so hard to remember to not do that, but I don't want to get my hair in here either, so it's kind of fussy work, so I have to stay up a little close. So what I think I'm going to do, just to show you the difference, I'm going to take a few of these seed beads here, and cut them off the string just a few so some of them are running away no no I don't want to be on the bracelet okay so now I'm going to pick them up and let's see what that looks like in there so I'll pick one up get a little glue on it just a little bit and see how this looks and it's perfect it's absolutely absolutely perfect if you can do this evenly all going around, you got it made, baby. It's going to look so nice, and it will go easy. I'm, I'm going to need a little bit more glue under that, too. I'll get that later. I kind of had to fuss with this because, you know, some of these things I'm telling you now are things I learned from doing the other one. But once you leave enough room, you're going to be fine. And then you can adjust these little daisy beads a little bit so it'll fill whatever else is maybe hanging out, you know, it doesn't belong there. And then that works out good. So I'll just put two more so you can get the, the sense of the whole entire piece, what it's going to look like. And then what I'm going to do is later on this evening or possibly tomorrow, I'm going to finish this bracelet. It won't be hard. Um, and then I'll take a picture and show it to you on my next newsletter, which is a good reason for you to sign up for my newsletter. And to sign up for my newsletter, all you have to do is go to www.bsuboutiques.com, which is my main website. And about halfway down on the left-hand side, there's a box that says, sign up for my newsletter. So do that, and you will also discover that if you do that, it will give you a code for one-time use 15% off no minimum. So you can buy a few things and have no minimum order and get 15% off. That's pretty cool. So anyway, you can see how it goes. It's basically going to be repeat, repeat, repeat until it's done. Okay? This is going to be beautiful. This is going to be just lovely. I think it's going to look better than this one. But um, there's one little thing I did want to share with you. First of all, if you use these check beads, you're going to need 44 or 45 of them. That's a lot. So you may want to look around through your stash and see what else you might have that might work besides those. Or you could put them on intermittently. Like perhaps maybe you would do, here's an idea. Um, 
like maybe you could do one of those and one of these no that would be a little big you need a tiny like a star star shaped here's one star shaped uh, bead cap with the we have these on the website too just look in the bead section bead cap section yeah that's about the right size you could do like one of those one of those and then you could put um you know one of these in there to fill it which would be a pretty look and it would save you some money you don't have to get so many beads. You could use flat backs instead. Um, you could use jump rings and fill them. You could use bits of rhinestone chain, Tiffany uh, mount uh, crystals, which uh, don't cost a whole lot either, believe it or not, or seed beads. You know, whatever you want to do. But you could change it up. Or if you had, like, if you want to do two colors, you could do, you know, like, get two strands of one and then, you know, two strands of the other or whatever, and then you could have enough. But, um... Yeah, you're going to need a lot of beads to do this. But, you know, when you do those bead projects where you're stringing it all up together, you use a lot of beads for that, too. So that's kind of the look of it. But, you know, use your old noggin there, and you'll come up with a lot of new ideas, even like a little round pearl, like a mermaid pearl. That might work, too, just to give you an idea. Like little ones like this, this size. Put a little mermaid pearl in there. Pretty, pretty. Or a bigger one, although that gives a lot of dimension. You just kind of have to mess with it. And that's what this kind of work is about. Assemblage, mosaic, whatever. It's kind of like, let's play with it a little bit. You might have to play with it ahead of time before you start your pattern so you're sure you have enough stuff to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Sometimes you play with it as you go along, however, but you will have to play with it. So anyway, that's basically what I wanted to show you today. And as I promised you, I will finish this and I will show you. Why don't you come over and join us at the Bisa Boutique's Creative Group. That's on Facebook. Um, you just, I think you have to answer like a couple of questions like why you want to be here. Basically, because I like jewelry or I saw Bisa's videos or, you know, whatever. I want to learn something new. And then I'll let you in. We'll let you in. Um, and then you're in the group, and you can try it out and see if you like it. There's a lot of really, really encouraging people there who like to share what they learn. And believe me, I think once we start doing a lot of this, there's going to be a ton of sharing. Everybody's going to get on this bandwagon, and we're going to do a lot of this. So don't forget, I will put the bead link in the description for you, and I will also pull, put the link for the... Um, cuff on there as well and some other suggestions of how you can fill and as time goes on we will have a lot of fill product at Bisa Boutiques. I have a lot of stuff on order that will be coming in soon and we'll just keep taking this on down the road and see what happens with it. So I hope you like the idea. I hope you'll try, uh, you know, you'll try it out. Even if you're not interested in doing the bead mosaic type look assemblies like in this, think of all the possibilities for this cuff. There are a bazillion possibilities. Get yourself a couple of them and uh, just have them around for when inspiration st strikes. You know, this would be good even if you just did line after line of chain on it. How cool would that be? There were some Chanel cuffs made like that one year, and I always loved them. Never could buy one, but you can make your own. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Thanks for stopping by to see me today. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and leave me a comment if you want to, because I will talk back. I will respond. So thanks so much, guys. And we will see you next time, which won't be too far away. Bye-bye now.